Hey, welcome to another week of Life Group where we're talking about divine direction. Uh, the good news is that we make our plans, but Scripture teaches us that the Lord determines our steps. And I've been really blessed to hear great stories about how God is working through your life groups. I know in my life group we had really uh, powerful and intimate discussion last weekend, and I pray that it would be the same way this week for you as we look at the third installment of the message series, Divine Direction. We looked at Acts chapter 20, and we saw the Apostle Paul who really made a very difficult decision, uh, and he went through four stages toward the confidence that he had. He had the Spirit's prompting, he had certain uncertainty, predictable resistance, and uncommon confidence. I want to start with, for the sake of our discussion, and talk about the Spirit's prompting. If you remember, the Greek words are deo honuma, wrapped or bound by, by the Spirit of God, deo honuma. And I encourage you to, to be really aware of those deo honuma moments, those times when you sense that God is prompting you to do something. I had one just this morning in my prayer time. I felt like God prompted me uh, to reach out to someone this morning, and so I did. And so what I wanna do is give you a moment to talk about uh, any time that you felt a Deo Honuma moment, that God prompted you to do something, and what I believe will happen is not only will this build your faith to know that you're hearing from God, but it'll also build the faith of those around you in your life group. So take a moment and let's share a time when you felt like you are prompted by the Spirit of God to do something. Talk about those Deo Honuma moments. All right, let's dive into the second question as we, again, think about and reflect on the text in Acts chapter 20. This is what Paul said. He said, now, compelled by the Spirit, Deo Honuma, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. Then he says, I don't know what's going to happen to me there, certain uncertainty. I'm going not knowing what's going to happen to me there, certain uncertainty. And then there's predictable resistance. He says, I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. This is so intense to me. God's calling me to do this, and I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the details. I only know that it will be difficult. Spirit's prompting, certain uncertainty, predictable resistance, and uncommon confidence. I want you to think about the decisions that you need to make because chances are pretty good that there will be at least one decision that you're going to need to make on faith. If you believe God is calling you to do something, to reach out to someone, to start something, to go back to school, to uh, to try to purchase a house instead of rent, to do a diff uh, different job, whatever it might be, and you're going to need to make a decision on faith. Remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you aren't a little uncertain every now and then, you're not living by faith. Now, when you take a step of faith, what can you expect? You can expect spiritual resistance. What does that mean? Maybe some people around you are not gonna understand. Some people might criticize. You might find real spiritual opposition, or you might just bump into some physical challenges that are hard to get through. Anytime that you face these, uh, any type of opposition, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not in the will of God, in fact, it may actually be an indication that you're doing what God wants you to do, and therefore your spiritual enemy is resisting. Let's think about this and really uh, seek God in the response. The question I want you to ask and discuss is this. What decision do you need to make right now that will require significant faith? What decision do you need to make right now that will require significant faith? Amy and I have been seeking God on a couple things and we're like up against it, and it's time to make a decision, and we're not sure what's gonna happen, and there may be difficult things on the backside, but what do we need? We need to say, okay, God, this is the Spirit's prompting. We're gonna make a decision. We've been walking with the wise. We've been seeking wisdom from you. We're gonna make a decision, and we're gonna make it by faith. What decision do you need to make that will require faith? Let's talk about it, and let God build your faith as you seek Him to make that decision. All right, let's dive into the final question, and I want to talk about uncommon confidence. Spirit's prompting, certain uncertainty, predictable resistance, and uncommon confidence. Here's something I've noticed in talking to a lot of people. 
Um, if you have a job that you love, you should thank God every single day because I talk to a lot of people that are in places like, I wish I was somewhere else. I wish I was doing something different. So if you wake up every day and get to do something that really uh, fulfills your passion, it utilizes your, your gifts, you, you're in a culture that you love, you really should thank God because so many people don't have that. The good news is, though, no matter what your career is or what you do with the bulk of your time in the day, you still have a calling to serve and glorify Jesus wherever you are. And this is what I love about what Paul said when he said, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. I don't know what's gonna to happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me there will be prison and hardships facing me. And then he says this, he says, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. In other words, if I get to preach, I'm gonna talk about Jesus. If they lock me up in prison, I'm gonna talk about Jesus to the guy I'm locked up to. If they let me back out, I'm gonna talk about Jesus. Wherever I am and whatever I'm doing, my calling is to talk about Jesus. In week one of the message series, we talked about Paul's verse that whatever you do, whatever you do, you may not love your job right now. You may be in school and wanting to be out right now. You may have three kids in diapers and you love them, but you can't wait until you have three kids out of diapers right now. Whatever you do, Paul said, do it all for the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. What I'd love for you to do is talk about this. With uncommon competence, how can you glorify God in your daily tasks? With uncommon competence, how can you decide and choose to better glorify God in what you do every single day. Uncommon confidence, I consider my life worth nothing to me, no matter what I do. My task is to testify to the gospel of God's grace.